Irene Lanzinger is president of the BC Federation of Labour, which is running its own Fight for $15 campaign. So, Irene, can you tell us, first of all, how did you decide on that $15 figure as the goal for minimum wage in BC? Well, we have a very active Young Workers Committee. Uh, and we launched this campaign about a year ago. And in the lead up to that, we worked with them and they were very clear on the notion that it should be $15. There's a couple of reasons for that. Um, $15 lifts you about 10% above the poverty line. Uh, if you're currently working at the minimum wage, you're $6,000 below the poverty line. So we wanted to pick a minimum wage that would lift people out of poverty. Uh, and it also matched up with the American campaign, the fight for 15 for fast food workers. And so when there are actions in the United States, we feel like we're part of a global movement. Uh, it was a nice slogan and it was 2015, the fight for 15 in 2015. Uh, so that all worked for us. Yeah, it all fits together. But of course, yeah. $15 US is more like $20 Canadian. You didn't consider uh, trying to campaign for something a little higher? No, we didn't. Our, our minimum wage in BC now is $10.45. And we understand that businesses need to phase this in. Um, and so we're you know open to that discussion. And so if we could get to $15 an hour in BC, workers would be above the poverty line. And then we think it should be tied to some process that lifts it regularly. That's also important. So how much credit do you give to the BC government for already raising minimum wage? Their, their response was pathetic. Uh, we had 1025, they raised it to 1045. At 1025, workers were $6,000 below the poverty line. At 1045, they're still $6,000 below the poverty line. I mean, our first response was to post a big picture of two dimes and say, really, is this enough? It, it was just a pathetic response, frankly. I give them no credit for that. It was too small an increase to make a difference for anyone. Now, of course, uh, business groups will often say, you know, that their uh, entire existence is based on, you know, making a certain rate of return. And if they have these costs go up almost arbitrarily, that it can mean that they're either going to have to cut back on other jobs or lose other parts of the business. And I'm curious to hear your reaction on those type of comments. Yeah, I think they do need to have a regular system and to know what's going to happen. In Alberta, they're phasing in a $15 minimum wage uh, with predictable increases, relative, you know, sizable increases, so they'll get to $15 by 2018. Uh, so I agree that businesses need something predictable. But my question to them is, when you raise a worker's wage from $10.45 an hour to $15 an hour, what do you think they do with that extra money? They spend it. They spend it in the economy. And in many cases, they spend it in small businesses. Also, if the $15 minimum wage is part of the employment standard in the province, everybody has to pay it. So the argument that they can't compete goes away because everybody has to pay it. It actually puts a lot of money into the economy, that much of which goes to small businesses. So now in the U.S., this Fight for 15 is focused primarily on fast food chains and employees mm -hmm. and those type of businesses. But you're looking much more broadly than that, right? Well, yes, and in Seattle, in LA, in San Francisco, and in Alberta, the campaign is a, a minimum wage of $15 for everyone. Um, in other parts of the United States, it's targeted at fast food workers, which have been a huge sector of the low wage uh, economy, a huge sector of low wage workers. Uh, so we say congratulations and we are totally behind the fast food workers in the United States. They're doing some wonderful things in terms of raising, raising the issue in the public and getting support for it. But having said that, we think everybody should make $15 an hour, at least. All right, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Diane.